Welcome to worship on this first Sunday after Christmas and our last Sunday of 2020. I hope that you were all able to celebrate our Lord's birth on Christmas Day. In our, my own family, we, our celebration was much different than other years as we had much less personal interaction with family and friends than in other years, but thankfully technology played a part in us still having some connectedness and some fun. There was also a number of worship opportunities that were available online that also enhanced our day. Before we begin worship this morning, there are a couple of announcements. Um, the first one being that um, we wish a very happy birthday to Paul Claus. Um, his birthday is this coming Saturday. Um, so keep, please keep him in your thoughts and prayers as he um, gets to another, uh, another year older. And then also, just as a reminder, if you would like to start off your new year um, by attending one of the Bible studies, um, you can um, get information um, by contacting the church office and they can send you the information on joining any of those groups. So if there's nothing more, let's worship God together. So acknowledging God's providence, we remember the source of all of our help through all the encircling years of our life with these wonderful words from Psalm 124. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all humankind. May you feel afresh in this Christmas season God's grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join me in our responsive call to worship. May the light of God's love push back the darkness. We come to the light from the four corners of the earth, from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. But we are all one in Jesus Christ. We come from many nations and many cultures, but we are all one in Jesus Christ. We come seeking the light that guides us to life, but we are all one in Jesus Christ. Let us lift up our many voices and praise the God of all people. I invite you to enjoy me in prayer. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of Jesus Christ, who came to share our humanity, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise is O Come All Ye Faithful, and I would invite you to rise if you're able, um, and we can sing together in our hearts.
be seated. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So let us confess our sins to God. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and baptize us once again with your spirit, that forgiven and renewed we may show forth your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear this assurance. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in the darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together before we come before God's word. Our God and our Lord, as we are about to hear your word, fill us with your spirit. Soften our hearts that we may see your ways. Fill us with your light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, and when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you are angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and you have, been give, have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Your sacred cities have become a wasteland. Even Zion is a wasteland. Jerusalem is a desolation. Only hope our holy and glorious temple, where our ancestors praised you, have been burned with fire, and all that we treasured lies in ruins. After all this, Lord, will you hold yourself back? Will you keep your silence and punish us beyond measure? And then from Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse 4. But when the set time had fully come. God sent his son, born of a woman born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts and the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. 
And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. And then finally, these wonderful words from Titus chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, in godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people of his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority, let no one disregard you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So do you remember last year at this time? The great hopes that we had for 2020. It was a year that was to be full of great promise. We had entered a new decade. The words 2020 even had such a nice ring to them. But very shortly into the new year, we began to hear about a virus that seemed at first to just be a little blip on the radar. But then by the end of February, the grim reality began to sink in. We were living through what would be, will become an event that will mark time for years to come. Something like 9-11, if you were alive when that took place, I am sure you know where you were when the planes went down. Yes, 2020 has impacted us in almost every thread of our lives. Just look around us at how we are worshiping, distanced and masked. We have experienced shortages and losses as and felt the fear and anxiety of disease, civil unrest, and natural disasters. In these long, lonely months, we have had to learn new ways of doing almost everything. After all we have faced and continue to face, it is hard to find anything good that has come out of this whole mess of a year. But wait. Before you write off the entire year as a total failure and waste, I would like you to think a moment or two and see if you can think of at least one positive thing that has happened in this past year. It can be something as simple as learning some new technology so you can stay in touch with your loved one. But I'm sure that if you think about it, you can think of at least one positive thing. I'll give you a couple moments. Do you have something in your mind? I want you to keep it there because we're going to come back to that. The prophet Isaiah in our passage this morning poetically conveys the prayers of the people of Israel who have suffered greatly at the hands of their conquerors. They are in a place of contrition and realize that they deserve the punishment that they have received for their repeated disobedience. They are recalling God's mighty acts in the past on their behalf, and they remain hopeful that he will again be in, they will be again in communion with their God and that he will overcome their adversaries as he did in the past. They humbly ask for forgiveness and they are reminded of God's assurance of pardon if they but call on him. Isaiah is entreating God to come down and be present with his people. While he's fully aware that the people of Israel have been the cause of much of the adversity that they have faced, nation after nation have been allowed to conquer them and take them into exile because they habitually disobeyed God's commands. It was such a long time that the people of Israel had been out of relationship with their God, and Isaiah seemingly is begging for some relief for both he and his people in the midst of their distress. 
Lord, if you would just come down and make things right again. God, are you listening to me? I would bet that there have been a time or two in this last year that what Isaiah says here resonates with us. I know it certainly has for me. Oh, Lord, that you would open the heavens and come down. Lord, take away the barriers between heaven and earth and let us be in your presence now and remove all these afflictions from us. We feel so alone and isolated and so far from God. But then do you notice that in the midst of his despair, he recounts the faithfulness of God to his people when they follow his commands. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. He grasps on with hope to the ways in which God has been with them in the past and recounts the true essence of who and what God is to them. Now, friends, I'm not here to tell you that COVID-19 is a direct result of the world's disobedience of the one true God. But what I do want us to get from this passage is that we are not alone in our suffering. When we look at all of the destruction that Isaiah is recounting here, it would almost seem there is no way to repair all the devastation. Consider the way our own lives have been affected by this virus and world events. Doesn't it seem like there are some parts of our lives that we have lost that we will never get back? Some things will just never be the same. But then you have these wonderful words about three quarters down the way in the passage that say, yet yeah, you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hand. Through all the loss, hardship, isolation, anxiety of these hard, long months of 2020, God has been at work in the lives of his people. Each one of us is on the potter's wheel, are being formed into what he wants us to be. Through both the good times and the bad times, our lives God is molding into who he wants us to be. In each turn of the wheel, he is bringing us into a closer relationship with him so that we are able to serve his kingdom better. The people through Isaiah are seeking God to mold them into what he wants them to be. Their prayer could easily be like that of the hymn writer. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. I, you, thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. An important thing here that the hymn writer includes in this is that God's will, not mine, that needs to be done. God can take our lumpy, ugly lump of clay and turn it into a beautiful vessel that is filled with the joy and love that only he gives us. When we are filled up with the blessings of God, we cannot help but spill them out with what we are filled with on the world that is so desperate around us. Another thing that the people of Israel recognize here is God's glory. He and only he is their creator and he controls all that was and all that is and all that is left to come. Every living human being has an innate knowledge of their creator. Yet it is up to each of us to decide if we will accept the Spirit's leading and accept Christ for who he is. This past Advent season has been filled with many reminders of our preparations, not just for Christ's coming as a baby, but also for Christ's return. 
His return to judge the people of the world is coming, and there is no way to escape the wrath of God unless we accept his wonderful gift of salvation that he came, brought to us on Christmas. Christmas, as you know, was just two days ago, but the richness of this passage in relation to our New Testament scriptures is so wonderful. Because indeed, Jesus Christ broke through the barrier that separates heaven and earth and came down to his people. Listen to these words again from Galatians. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, so that you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you an heir. Jesus didn't enter the world, then didn't enter the world in a palace or a king's court. Instead, he chose to enter the world right in a pile of mucky, messy, stinky, dirty straw. This same Jesus came, comes and meets us in the stinkiness mess stinky mess of our sin. The Lord forgives us, the Lord save us, saves us, and nothing can separate us from his love for us. Jesus' love is unbeatable, unstoppable, unwrappable, and is a love that the mind can't fully understand. It can only be felt. Jesus waits for you to draw close so he can embrace you with his love even in the deepest despair of our lives. This morning at the foot of the cradle of Christ, like the foot of the cross, we are all making our way with nothing of our own that makes us good. But we find forgiveness for all the wrong things we have done because he lived and died for us. God has appeared bringing salvation for all people. Jesus whispers to us softly, I did it for love, because I never, no matter what, can ever stop loving you. Then lastly, the manger and the cross are not the end. Because our Savior lives, we have a sure hope. <clears throat> And we can look forward to that final barrier between heaven and earth, opening up once more, and he will bring us home to be with our Savior forever. Or as Titus put it, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Going back to my original question to you, Do you see any more places where God has been shaping you in the midst of the trials of 2020? It is a question that I think deserves some further contemplation as we are about ready to enter the new and promising year of 2021. This past year has shaped us. It has changed us. And my prayer is that in the new year, we will fully live out God working in us during this historic year. Amen. Our hymn of meditation this morning is, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Um, I do have to let you know that there's a transition. The last verse we're going to... Um, here will actually just be music, um, not the words, the first ones will, but I thought it was too important of a verse to leave out. So there will be a little bit of a...
So I um, left the stewardship committee out here and didn't have my slide because I thought it might be on the computer somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So anyway, but I wanted to just remind everyone that um, we do have the opportunity to give in a number of ways um, that you can give your offerings via the plate, the VEC, um, and also online, um, or you can actually mail them to the office. But I didn't bring the doxology, so you'll have to be thinking it in your mind. So, we've come to our time of prayer, and before we go to prayer, I have a few prayer requests that I already have. Are there any other prayer, um, prayer concerns that people would like to bring forward? Yes. Jim and Barbara, who were former members of this church, um, now are suffering with COVID. Okay, okay. If there's nothing more, let's go to God in prayer. God of new beginnings, as we conclude the recent holiday season, we recognize that we, even now, forging ahead into a new year. As we look back at the year gone by, we see many things, things that grieve us, things that cause us to rejoice, things that su have surprised us in both good and bad, things that concern us. 
For a congregational Lord, any given year is a time of highs and lows, births and deaths, and exciting opportunities and unfulfilled hopes. And this year has been no exception. Yet you are the faithful God who stays with us and through it all. When we ascend into the house of joy, you are there to receive the words of praise that gush from our lips. When we descend into the valleys of shadow of death, fear, uncertainty, you are there to hold our hands in the darkness and to assure us that we are not alone. When we walk level paths, as we go about ordinary tasks, you walk with us, gracing the fruit of our hands with your own sacred benediction. We confess, Father, that because we did not always behave the way we desire for ourselves, there are times when your abiding pre presence makes us squirm, when the brilliance of your light makes us scurry for cover. We are ashamed of some of the things we do as you walk alongside of us, of some thoughts we entertain or deep places of our heart, places that are even so not hidden from you. Yet, in your grace, you continue to stick with us. So we find your faithful constancy as our companion in joys and in sorrows to be a source of relief, of assurance, of repose. Thank you for being with us through these many difficult turns and twists in this last year. And now as we enter a new year, we sense anew how much we need your providential presence. We know that in the past months, loved ones have suddenly died. Previous jobs have suddenly terminated it. Illnesses that we did not even remotely suspect were diagnosed and suddenly all life has changed. We did not see any of those things coming, oh God, and we do not have eyesight that can penetrate the months ahead in this new month and year. All we can do is petition you for mercy and strength in what we are about to face. But we pray too that you will keep us in good health, in perfect safety, and in the knowledge that we are loved by you and also by family and friends. We need that sense of love, oh God, because we know there are so many around us in life who lack this awareness. So many are lonely. So many have endured the holiday season with only a grim determination to help them keep getting out of bed in the morning. There were no parties to attend. They received no Christmas cards, had no one to buy them gifts. The lonely among us are often visible to us, but you see them, and by your prompting, help us and enable us to help minister to them as well. We pray that you would help us to be able to befriend those who need your love. And Lord, as we think this morning of those of our congregation that are in need, we think of especially for Sarah Schubert's family and in the death of her brother-in-law, we pray that you would be with them and give them comfort. We pray for also for the Varga family as they grieve the loss of Paul's Aunt Teresa. And also that we have prayers for Paul's Aunt Teresa, uh, sister, Amishi, Shay, who fell and broke her hip. And we pray that you would give her some he the healing touch. Lord, for Jim and Barb, we pray for your healing with the COVID, and we pray that you would be with them, and also all those others that are suffering from that at this time. We pray that as we go into this year, this year of promise with vaccinations, that you would be with us and be with the doctors and the caregivers, that they would give, get the vaccinations out to those that need them most. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to be with us as a church family as we continue to minister in this time. And those, Lord, we remember for each person that is going to be not here with us, but also is with us 
as we gather on the internet. Lord, we pray that you would be with us all. And then we pray that to the author of grace, the God of love, and your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit's blessing would be upon your children. Keep our hearts and thoughts in Jesus Christ, your Son, our only Savior, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise for our closing hymn. I heard the bells on Christmas Day and then remain standing for the benedictions. And I would ask that you would, as you're looking at the um, words, that they would resonate in your heart as we listen together. to God who is able to strengthen you according to the gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that has kept, was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring with obedience of faith to the one only wise God through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone.